All right, today, guys, we are talking about my top three lens choices for daytime travel photography. Let's tuck in. Drum roll, please. And the runner up. Oh, yeah, I said runner up. We're talking actually about the fourth one. Sneaky. The runner up just misses the bronze is the 50 mil. 50 mil 1.2. It's a beautiful piece of glass. And if you've ever shot on a 50, you know they're glorious and they're lovely. But it is not my top three go to's. But if you don't have one of these, you don't necessarily need to be after the 1.2, it's a little bit pricey. Go for the 1.4 or the 1.8. I don't know if they do the 1.8 anymore. The 1.4, couple hundred bucks, worth it. Shooting on a 50, it's just gorgeous. Number three. Whew. Number three is probably the most difficult lens to stick in my bag because it's the biggest and the heaviest. And it is this beast. It is the 70 to 200. It's backbreaking every time I pick it up or want to look at it or whatever, but the imagery is just too good. Gets you those nice close ups, allows you to step back and take in the action. I don't like putting it in my bag, but it's so good, it's just got to go in there. Do you have to think about compression? No. I could probably go into the tech specs of the lens itself, give you all the compression and all that stuff, but I genuinely don't care. It's a workhorse, it's great, and it produces incredible imagery done. Oh, and better yet, it's image stabilized. So as I do shoot a lot of video, because this thing's heavy and my spine is breaking in half, at least it's stable. Okay, and the silver medal goes to the ultimate Canon workhorse, which is the 24 to 105. Annoyingly, it is an f4 lens, but it is just too flippin' good all around not to have in your bag. And because I'm typically on the road, all day, um, my arms get tired, my legs get tired, my back gets tired, this thing's heavy, and having an image stabilized lens that can take me from 24 mil to a far end of 105 is really, really handy. And this beauty stays on this body pretty much all day. I could probably stick some super glue in there, but I'm not gonna do that. Side note, I shoot on two bodies that share lenses. I know that there's new things out there like the Canon R series that has RF mount lenses, and that's not what I'm talking about here today. So shooting on this body and this body, the 5D Mark IV and the 1DX Mark II, allow me to share lenses across. So I can be swapping out glass, no big deal, no adapters or whatever to, to make sure that, I, that are connected. It's just simple. And drum roll for the gold medal number one lens is a 16 to 35. It's my baby. I feel like it has defined my imagery and what I love most about photography more than any other lens. You can get some gorgeous imagery, but this thing defines what I do and what I love about it. The 16 to 35 allows me to get close, to be there, to be in those moments. I, uh, I just can't say enough about it. I think a lot of photographers that I've bumped into don't like it because it has a warping effect, but I actually like it. The look, the feel, the the build, it's just, it's awesome. One of the main reasons that this thing lives in my bag all the time is my Polaroid project. The Polaroid project has been very much a part of all of my travel photography where I have the opportunity to give photos back and then photograph that instant moment where they get to see their face for the first time on a Polaroid. Um, I, I love it. And with all my other lenses, it, it just, it, it, it doesn't work right. This thing, absolutely perfect. It allows me to photograph the photo on the camera, their face, it's gold. I'd say I use it far more than my 24 to 105. And this thing needs to be super glued to a body because it's always on, uh, because I never know when those Polaroid moments are gonna happen. And what I don't wanna do is miss it and be fumbling around for a piece of glass. So this thing typically lives on the 1DX Mark II and then the 24 to 105 and the 70 to 200 kind of just interchange on the 5D Mark IV. Sorry, curveball, swerve, but that's it. So why Canon? The answer is simple. Back in 2005, when they released that Canon 5D Mark II, it was irresistible. And at that time, I was starting a company that was gonna facilitate photographers going all over the world to take photographs. And I wanted to make sure that I had something that was gorgeous, that could photograph and film, and I could get anywhere in the world. And Canon was the only option. But 20 years later, I'm loving it. And I'm still drinking the Kool-Aid. All right, everybody, thanks for sticking around. I hope you like my lens choices. If you have a different setup, I would love to hear about it. 
So park it down below. Let me know why you use, what you use, and when you use it. Cool? And if you don't like my setup, let me know. Tell me about it, and I'll reply, and I'll tell you about it. Stick around. I've also got more things coming up. I've got my nighttime setup that you might be interested in, too. And, uh, hey, if you're now uh, off the fence on one of these lenses, awesome. Hit that like button if it was valuable. Peace. Pick up the phone. Call your friends. Call your family. I'm out. Hello? Hello? Yeah? Do you use these things? I hate these things. They always get lost. You never know where they are when you need them. And then when you have them on, you can't take the photo you want. These, to me, are barriers to beautiful imagery. So, I just put them in the bin. The bin.